Hello students, welcome to our afternoon read aloud. Today we'll be reading a book about Abraham Lincoln. And I put up this poster to remind us of the most important facts we've been learning. He was born in a log cabin, right? That's sometimes a symbol for him. He taught himself how to read. People called him Honest Abe, and he was the 16th president. And I can also remember a few things from the pictures. He's on a penny, right? He's also on the $5 bill. And this is a photograph. I can remember that we actually have real photos of Lincoln, don't we? Right? Because he was our president when photography was just becoming more used. So for today, we're going to enjoy Abe Lincoln Loved Animals. And there he is with some kittens and a dog bringing him his top hat. Isn't that the stovepipe hat is another symbol of Lincoln? Ooh, and on the back, I see some ladies in fancy dresses with goats running through them. Wonder what that's about. We'll find out. So here we go. Abe Lincoln loved animals. And oh my gosh, there is an old photograph of a dog. It's like a dog kind of on a little carpet on a table, maybe. Hmm, wonder what that's about. Abe Lincoln Loved Animals, written by Ellen Jackson, illustrated by Doris Etlinger. Okay, so, oh, that must be Lincoln as a young, as a young boy. And there he's looking in the forest, seeing some animals, some foxes. Long ago, in the wooded hollows of Kentucky, lived a young boy who loved animals. In the spring, the boy, Abraham Lincoln, discovered a mother fox with her babies. In the autumn, he watched raccoons gather acorns in the woods. From an early age, Abraham saw that animals felt pain and pleasure and had lives of their own. The boy's family lived on a farm, first in Kentucky and later in Indiana. Abraham and his sister Sarah fetched water, chopped firewood, and helped their mother plant seeds and grind corn. Abraham's papa often hunted rabbits or deer. Hunting was a way of life for those who lived on the frontier. Everyone worked hard to put food on the table. So they, they grow things, but they also gather and hunt things. That wobbling was Bibi. She just got up on the tree. She's up there on the cat tree right now. When Abraham grew older, his family expected him to feed the family. One day he spotted a flock of wild turkeys. He took aim with a rifle and shot one of the birds. But the sight of the dying turkey filled him with sorrow. That is, it made him super, super sad. I will never hunt a large animal again, he thought to himself. And he didn't. It's interesting that he couldn't really say, I'll never hunt again, because that almost wouldn't be allowed, right? He has to bring home some meat for his family, but maybe he just stuck with like squirrels and little things. Other children would sometimes hurt animals, but not Abraham. Once at school, Abraham saw his friends putting red hot coals on the back of a turtle. He had to speak up and stop them. Cruelty to animals is wrong. He told the children, even an ant values its life. When he had grown into a young man, Abraham moved to Springfield, Illinois and worked as a lawyer. When he was only 20, he made a speech that so impressed everyone, it was printed in the newspaper. Important people began to notice him. But Abraham still took time to help animals. One day, he and his friends were riding in the country. As Abraham passed a grove of wild plum and crabapple trees, he stopped. Two baby birds had been blown like leaves from their nest. He dismounted, that means he got off his horse, gathered up the birds, shinnied up the tree, that means he climbed up the tree and put them back. What foolishness! Abraham's friend Joshua Speed said, Now you've gone and ruined your good suit. I could not have slept well tonight if I had not saved those birds, said Abraham quietly. He didn't care if his friends laughed at him, so he saved the little birds, even though it ruined his nice suit. Oh, 
there he is with his family. At a dance in 1839, Abraham met a friendly, spunky girl named Mary Todd. Three years later, they were married. During the next 11 years, the couple had four boys, Robert, Eddie, Willie, and Tad. Abraham found room in his house for cats, kittens, and dogs. He and the boys liked to walk in the woods, looking for insects, butterflies, and rocks. Abraham traveled to nearby towns to work with people who needed a lawyer. He rode old Bob, who was probably his favorite animal companion. After a ride, Abraham would examine Bob's feet, give him a carrot, and rub his nose. So their family had lots of animals, and he took especially good care of his horse. Not just because he it was right he was riding it everywhere, but I think he had took extra care because he thought he understood that animals have lives and feelings just like we do. A floppy-eared dog named Fido came to live with the Lincoln family. Abraham and Fido would often walk down the street with the dog carrying a parcel in its mouth, so he would carry packages. When Abraham stopped for a haircut at Billy's barber shop, Fido waited patiently outside. Unless a group of children came by, then Fido jumped and played until Abraham was ready to go home. Abraham served a term in the U.S. House of Representatives. In 1860, he became a candidate for President of the United States. When he won the election, the Lincoln family prepared to move to the White House in Washington, D.C. Sadly, Abraham decided that Fido would not go with the family. The train trip would be long and difficult, and the Lincoln family had a lot of luggage. Abraham asked a neighbor family, the Rolls, to take Fido. He gave them the sofa that was the dog's favorite piece of furniture. You must promise me, said Abraham to the Roll boys, not to scold Fido for coming in the house with muddy paws. He should never be tied up alone in the backyard, and whenever he scratches at the door, you must let him in. Fido's new family agreed to everything. How could they say no to the new president? Before long, the Lincoln family left for Washington. They had a picture taken of Fido so they would never forget him. Photography was still new, and this was the first picture ever taken of a presidential pet. Ooh, hey, this is like the picture from the back, except here we can see the goats are pulling a boy in a chair. But it looks like a party. Oh, no, what's up? In Washington, the Lincoln family filled their new home with pets, rabbits, dogs, cats, even a couple of goats. Tad, Abraham's youngest son, once hitched the goats to a chair and drove them through the White House, scattering a group of women attending a reception. A guest noticed how the president pampered the family cat, who sat next to him during dinner. Don't you think it is shameful for Mr. Lincoln to feed Tabby with a gold fork? Mrs. Lincoln asked the guest. If the gold fork was good enough for President Buchanan, I think it's good enough for Tabby, said Abraham Lincoln. Look, he even fed the cat with a little gold fork. Probably not all the time, but just now and then for fun. The new president had many problems. In 1860, the United States consisted of some states that permitted slavery and others that didn't. Slavery was a terrible evil that allowed white people to own black people. Slaves were made to work hard and were treated cruelly. Abraham Lincoln had promised to ban slavery in the territories that would soon become states. I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. When Abraham Lincoln was elected, many of the southern slaveholding states seceded or left the Union. They left the United States to form their own government. But Abraham Lincoln was willing to fight to keep the country together. Soon the United States was plunged into a terrible civil war. Abraham Lincoln realized that slavery must end if the Union was to be saved. In 1863, he issued the Emancipation Proclamation, freeing all the slaves in the rebel states. Some people hated the president for this act. Others thought he was a great man. Abraham Lincoln had courageously committed the United States government to the cause of freedom. 
the war continued. On the battlefield, the dead were heaped as high as autumn leaves. Abraham's face was haggard and gray with constant worry. The president found comfort in the company of animals. On a visit to the headquarters of General Grant, leader of the Union Army, he came upon three tiny kittens whose mother had just died. He picked them up, pet them, and said to the colonel in charge, I hope you will see these poor little motherless kitties are given plenty of milk and treated kindly. The colonel promised the kittens would be well treated. Despite the war, Abraham was never too busy for his boys. One year, just before Christmas, Tad found a huge turkey wandering on the White House grounds. Tad named him Jack, looped a piece of string around his neck, and led him around to meet the White House staff. I see you've met your Christmas dinner, said the cook. What? Was Jack to be killed and served for Christmas? Tad ran to the president's office where his father was in an important meeting. Papa, said Tad, please don't let them kill Jack. He's a good turkey and doesn't deserve to die. Abraham listened quietly. Long ago, he had shot a turkey. Perhaps the regret he had felt then welled up in his heart again, but this time things would end differently. He is a good turkey, Tad, said Abraham, and I'll pardon him. After all, I am the president. Then Abraham Lincoln wrote out a presidential pardon for Jack, changing him from a meal into a member of the family. So the president can write a pardon. A president can make it so somebody doesn't go to jail or doesn't have to serve their sentence. In this case, it was so the turkey would not get killed for Christmas dinner. In 1864, President Lincoln was elected to serve another four-year term. But in April 1865, a few days after the Civil War had ended and the nation was reunited, Lincoln was shot and killed by an assassin. People all over the country mourned the death of their beloved leader. When President Lincoln was buried in Springfield, Illinois, Old Bob, wearing a blanket with silver fringe, walked behind the funeral procession. Fido, too, was brought back to his old home to greet the mourners. So after Lincoln died, when they had the funeral procession in, back in his hometown, old Bob and also Fido were there. There's Fido, see him? And there's Lincoln's casket. Today, people everywhere honor Abraham Lincoln, the president who saved the Union and issued the Emancipation Proclamation. Abraham's love for animals lives on. Each Thanksgiving, the President of the United States pardons a turkey, just as Abraham Lincoln did more than 100 years ago. Abraham Lincoln's kind heart had room for all creatures, great and small. A Native American legend says that when humans die, they are greeted by all the animals they made friends with when they were alive. If so, voices from the air, the water, and the land must have welcomed Abraham Lincoln home. So that's a picture of a modern day president pardoning, signing the pardon paper for the turkey. And here's a picture from the illustrator's imagination showing like Abraham Lincoln, right after he's died, meeting all the animals that he was friends with and that he took care for. Okay, so since we gotta do something at the end, I want to compare. That means kind of look at side by side. Do you remember the photograph from the title page? There is the real photograph of their family dog, Fido, right? And here is a picture. Here's the illustrator's picture of maybe when the photo was taken because there is the dog, right, on the little sofa and there's the photographer. And look, it's like he's in the same position as in the photograph. So. I hope you enjoyed A Blink and Loves Animals, and I hope you have a great afternoon. Don't forget to keep washing your hands, cover your coughs and sneezes, do some reading, do some writing, help your family around the house, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!